what is uh, referred to as a third eye is not necessarily another eye like this, okay? It is not. It is just that, you know, there are… Hmm, there are, okay. Um, in the pranic system, we talked about the seventy-two thousand nadis. These seventy-two thousand nadis have one hundred and fourteen important junction points in the body. Like you know in this building the electrical systems are running, there are many junction points where major meeting of connections are happening. There are one hundred and fourteen junction points in the body. Generally these are referred to as chakras. The word chakra literally means a wheel. But these are not in the form of circles or wheels, they always meet in the form of a triangle. The nadis always meet in the form of a triangle. Why I think, yeah, there is a tri arranged triangle being used. It is because that is a basic way the nadis meet. They are the chakras and the whole yogic system depends on what you do with them. So out of this one hundred and fourteen, seven are held as a major junction points. So these are the seven chakras that everybody is normally talking about. They are in certain… located in certain parts of your body. You know something about this or… everybody knows something about it, okay. These are Mooladhara, Swadishthana, Manipuraka, Anahata, Vishuddhi, Agna, Sahasrata. Mooladhara means the foundation. This is uh, a center which is… Physically or physiologically, it is located between your anal outlet and your genital organ. It's called the perineum medically, I think. Where's the doctor? This is Mooladhara. If your energies in, are dominant in your Mooladhara, food and sleep will be the two major qualities of your life. They will be the most important factors in your life, food and sleep. If your energies are dominant in your swadhisthana, which is located just about your above your genital organ, here you will be a pleasure seeker. Pleasure does not necessarily mean sex and things like that. You are somebody who wants to enjoy the world that's dominant in you. So a person who is a pleasure seeker, he lives little more intensely than a person who is living just for food and sleep. Yes? So these are just different levels of intensities of life. As the intensity increases, your ability to experience different dimensions of life moves from one area of life to another. If your energies move into Manipuraka or if they are more dominant in Manipuraka, you are a doer in the world, you want to do things. Maybe you are a businessman, maybe you are a politician or something where a lot of doing is needed, you know. You are a doer. If energies move into anahata, this is the creative center, you become a creative person. Maybe you are an artist or at least you have tendencies, maybe you didn't make it in the Hollywood but <laughs> you know, you are… you want to create more than simply eating and sleeping or seeking pleasure outside, you would like to do something. There is creativity in you. A person, let's say an artist, Generally, their lives may be considered a little freaky for other people, but they experience life little more intensely than, let's say, a businessman. Yes? The word anahata means unstruck. This is the unstruck sound. This is a meeting between the lower and the higher. All your survival instincts are in the lower three chakras. Self-preservation is in Manipuraka, Swadhisthana and Muladhara. The longing to break away from all this and go away beyond is in Vishuddhi, Agna and Sahasrara. Anahata is the meeting point. So Anahata, the symbolism is two triangles meeting. You've seen that the star of David, everything comes from Anahata. Okay, that is the symbol for Anahata. Two upward moving and downward moving triangles meeting because these are two different dimensions of life. 
One is catering to self-preservation, another is catering to the longing to go beyond. In your head and your heart, you have longings to go beyond, but in your body you have longings to preserve. So if energy is moving to Vishuddhi, it's a power center, you can become enormously powerful, very powerful individuals. When I say power, not necessarily physical or financial or something, people can be powerful in so many ways. Just the very way they stand, some people are powerful, some people are not, isn't it? Yes? So you don't have to do any action. You make ten men stand here, the very ways they stand, some men are powerful, some aren't, isn't it so? It's not necessarily because of their activity, just the way they are. They don't have to pose for anything, just simply the way they are, there is power about them. If your energies move into anahata, uh, agna, I'm sorry, you are intellectually realized, you see things clearly, you see everything the way it is. Once you begin to see everything the way it is, you are at peace. So agna is called as the third eye because you see things the way they are. With these two eyes are very deceptive. They make you see things the way it is necessary for your survival. They don't make… You, allow you to see everything the way it is. Once your energies touch agna, now you're seeing things the way they are, everything the way it is. Now, that is why it is referred to as a third eye. Now, Sahasrar is the seventh chakra that is not in the body, just outside the body. But most people it is dormant, it is not active. If some sadhana comes into your life, if you activate it in a certain way or because of a very intense way of living, it can become active. If, sahas if energy is moving to Sahasrar, you will become unexplainably unreasonably ecstatic, simply like crazy you're ecstatic. If you come to the Bhava Spandana, you will see, simply for no reason, you will be spilling in ecstasy. You just don't know what's happening, just no external reason, simply you're ecstatic, simply because your energies touch Sahasrara. 